Okay, to show you the first boot of the T-Mobile G2, I've gone ahead and unboxed it and I had to pop the battery door out. You do that with this little slider there. The aluminum cover pops off very, very easily and then I had to pull out a little battery protector sleeve or film, I guess I'd call it. So I've gone ahead and done that and we'll just snap that back in place. Power button's up on the top, so let's push that and see what we get. Completely unscripted, so I don't even know if we're charged up or not. First thing we got was a vibration on the phone, which felt very good and solid. HTC logo. And we'll just let this run through here so you can see kind of the, the timing of the first boot. One thing I should mention is that first boots usually take longer than subsequent boots, so keep that in mind. Got a T-Mobile G2 with Google logo on the screen, and then right there, we've got the T-Mobile with G2 screen. So that that was a very fast one. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed through this. Let's me customize my phone, and it says I can return to this screen by selecting the setup icon in the app drawer, which is nice. So I can go right back into the setup wizard. So that's kind of cool. I'm gonna go ahead and set these up later. So I'll just continue through them for now. I'm going to enable geolocation and then I have a home button and that immediately takes me straight home. Now I don't have a SIM in the phone right now so it's not going out. That's what these icons tell me. No SIM, no service and it tells me that the time is 12.01 a.m. which obviously is incorrect but that's what we have without a SIM in there without any data. Looking at the screen, very fluid motion and they preload it with a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screens come default on this device, which is a bit more than average. Very responsive. This is using the stock launcher. Nothing fancy or special here. Very fluid. I like that quite a bit. And if you noticed right there, the, the capacitive button on the bottom to go back is very smooth and very responsive. Menu is responsive as well. Everything on this device is, is just super fast. I'm really, really impressed with it so far. So, let's see how this thing does. I'm going to go ahead and pop my SIM in there, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've gone ahead and popped the battery out, and I've shown you how to do that. I slid the SIM in. Now, this is a very tight fit, but... Uh, just go ahead and put it in according to the diagram there and you're good to go. In a previous video I showed you the uh, little SD card down here and I couldn't figure out how to get it open and didn't want to spend too much time on it because I was covering other stuff on the phone. But you've got a diagram here that shows you you just push down and that releases this. Very similar to the way that uh, SIM slots worked in the past. Uh, it comes with an 8 gig class 2 micro SDHC. I'm going to go ahead and replace it with the one that I have all of my stuff on, which is also 8 gig, but it's a class 4, which is a little bit faster. So we'll see about that. Now, the contacts go down in this slot, so we're just going to push that in there. Close the slot, and then we have to slide the little metal mechanism up to lock it in place. Once that's in, we simply drop the battery in place, and we put our metal back panel on and it snaps down securely and of course now I'm gonna boot it back up again but I'm gonna do that off camera for you downloading a whole bunch of apps uh, when I say downloading I mean updating uh, it's pulling down everything that was pre-installed that had the allow automatic updating on just that's a, a feature of Froyo that I really really like Google Maps needs a manual update because it requires more permissions and I'm amazed at just how fast this is. Uh, I've had the sim in there for all of about three minutes and I've already gotten all of these updates. Ironically, as it may be, while I was setting this up, I got a text message from T-Mobile telling me that my G2 had shipped and giving me the tracking number. And that text message got here about an hour after the phone did. So kind of funny there. I uh, thought it was rather interesting. But what I want to do to uh, finish up this video 
is to just show you all around on the keyboard down here. Now this is really impressive. I'm gonna go back home and again, those buttons, those capacitive buttons are just so responsive, it's amazing. But we've got some special buttons. First of all, these buttons are huge. If you wanna compare them over here to the Epic 4G, they look about the same size, but they just feel so much bigger. Uh, they're very responsive underhand and just very, very nice. You've got three states to the buttons, uh, just standard lowercase, hold down the shift button to get uppercase, and hold down alt to get to the other options, like the numbers here across the top. And they are ordered straight across the top instead of clustered here in the middle like you have on some other devices. You've also got an alt button on the other side, and frequently used buttons for email and, and web stuff over here. You've got an at symbol, a www dot, and a dot com button over here. You also have these kind of interesting navigate buttons. Now, the navigate buttons let you just move. They're, they're shortcut keys, so kind of neat. It goes through a wizard here. It says, next, you'll choose which shortcut you'd like to assign to quick key one. So, kind of neat. Let's go ahead and do, I don't know, let's pick out, what do you want to do? Directions and navigation. That sounds good to me. And we just won't set that up right now. We'd put in a, uh, an address if we wanted to. But the same thing down here for the other quick key and then on the bottom. So, you've got three total quick keys that you can assign, which is very, very nice. Again, the speed on this device is just phenomenal. I love it a lot, and uh, I'm very, very impressed with the overall feel, uh, the overall experience of the device. So, next up in our video series, we're going to show you just how fast it is. I know a lot of you have complained about the 800 megahertz processor that's inside this device. Well, let's go and see if it's really a problem or not. Uh, and to do that, we're going to compare it running Quadrant, which is a benchmarking program, and we're going to compare it against the Epic 4G, which is one of the fastest phones on the market. So make sure you subscribe to our video channel and watch that video as soon as we get it released.